Your passwords are no longer safe after an entirely new state of matter was created by Microsoft. Yeah, the company that struggles with supporting a stable operating system just stabilized quantum particles themselves. And it might just mean the end of all of your private data online. Warning, Philip is a professional mind blower. The topics discussed are not for the closed minded. We're talking a new state of matter, you know, like solid, liquid, gas. There's also the lesser known plasma for things like the sun, the northern lights, and lightning, but these four are pretty much all we've known. Well, the Windows guys just created a new one called a topological state. The name's kind of a work in progress, but what's special about this one is that it only exists at the quantum level. Quantum meaning very, 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 very small, where classical physics no longer applies. And this topological state is a game changer for quantum computing. For those who don't know, quantum computing is sort of like the next big technological breakthrough, just like AI has been in recent years. And it may literally destroy our entire digital world. But what exactly makes quantum computing different from the laptop, phone, or desktop PC that you use today? First of all, quantum computers look like this, cost millions of dollars, and need to be cooled to near absolute zero, which is negative 273 degrees Celsius to operate. But what's really impressive is how they compute data. So if you strip down today's computers to their most bare bones computation processes, we'll see that everything is built on bits, basic binary switches that can have one of two values, one or zero. These values are assigned through electrical signals that pass through a solid medium like a silicon transistor that represents the switch. Since there are only two options, we call them binary, on or off, voltage or no voltage, based on the electrons that pass through them, which then form longer strings of ones and zeros that become bytes, eight bits, kilobytes, a thousand bytes, megabytes, a thousand kilobytes, and so on. These ones and zeros are binary code and represent data or computational procedures that virtually all technology is based on. This collection of ones and zeros could be a photo of your mom, and then this one could be me sending her a text. Now, quantum computers, instead of bits, use a new technology called qubits, quantum bits, that are non-binary, which doesn't mean they'll be using pronouns, but rather these qubits can now be one and zero at the same time, called superposition, and are also fairly unstable. With traditional computing, running complex simulations with hundreds of variables can take a really, really long time because each bit needs to be assigned a specific value one or zero and then that bit needs to be freed up before it can be used again for another operation quantum computing uses the unique properties of the atomic level by letting qubits be a one and zero at the same time meaning a qubit doesn't really need to be freed up before it can be used for something else they can essentially be used for multiple operations all at once instead of waiting for their turn to be a one or zero like in classical computing in our classical universe an object can't really be in two different states at the same time. So it's theorized that these qubits are actually communicating with parallel universes, where it exists as a zero in one universe and a one in another, and it instantly pulls the information it needs from that qubit into our universe. In a sense, quantum computing creates time by borrowing the processing time of qubits in other universes and using their information in our own. By this theory, which is a real theory proposed by quantum computer scientists, these qubits are communicating directly with the multiverse. Yeah, I know, it's a mind. Even the people working on this technology themselves admit they don't really know how it works, but it does. Also, fun fact, I actually used to work at a quantum computing company, shout out D-Wave. So quantum computers are exponentially faster than conventional ones, as they're making use of time that doesn't even exist in our reality. And I don't think you realize how much faster that makes them. Google's quantum computer, Project Willow, took a complex problem that would have taken a traditional supercomputer 10 septillion years to solve. That's the one with 25 zeros in years, which is longer than what the universe is expected to be around for. And Project Willow cracked it in five minutes. That problem was literally meant to outlast the entire timeline of the universe and quantum computing just made it its bitch. These extremely hard to solve problems are actually what modern day security and encryption systems are based on. And this is where that tech apocalypse comes into play. We've been safe for now due to the highly unstable nature of qubits, which makes quantum computing not very reliable, scalable, nor practical yet. Because Microsoft just created that new state of matter, which fixes that problem in their chip, the Majorana 1, which instead of relying on electrons running through classical bits, uses a new type of particle called the Majorana particle in its qubits, a zero energy quasi particle that can exist in this newly discovered topological state of matter called a topological superconductor. Yeah, I know, science. This particle is also its own antiparticle, which means it is extremely stable, exactly the problem that qubits were facing up until now. According to them, Majorana 1 
one can be scaled to have more computational power than all traditional computers and supercomputers in the world combined. And it's about that big. We would still need at least 1 million qubits to start solving world-changing problems like cancer, accurate weather prediction, financial modeling and such, which quantum computing promises to do. The Majorana 1 currently has 8 qubits, but is designed to scale to a million. I mean, we started with 8-bit video games and look what we have today. For the record, Google's Project Willow had 105 qubits and well, look what that did. So we're on track to developing quantum computers and potentially collapsing our global digital security systems. Remember those super hard to solve problems that modern day security and encryption methods rely on to stay secure? Those hard to solve problems are called cryptography, which is simply the act of replacing certain symbols with other ones in order to keep the original symbols a secret and is how your private data stays encrypted. Cryptography has gotten a lot more complicated in recent years and is by design. Today, our most advanced cryptography ciphers, which are the formulas used for replacing symbols, are intentionally designed to be super duper time consuming to crack. You can use computers to guess these ciphers over and over again until they find it out, but are specifically designed to take the most advanced supercomputer billions, trillions, whatever, septillions of years to figure out, which is why these systems are deemed secure. That's where quantum computers break everything. If Google's Project Willow is a sign of things to come, solving a problem meant to outlast the entire universe in five minutes, today's encryption methods are absolutely f***ing cooked. Your passwords, logins, banking info, cloud storage, Wi-Fi, even the group chat all rely on encryption to keep it private and secure. Computers that could crack that security in a heartbeat would end the entire digital world. The quantum apocalypse Y2Q. The NSA already warned us and told us it would happen sometime in the 2030s, but these recent breakthroughs just fast forwarded our entire timeline. Then combine this with AI and I don't even want to think about what might happen. For the longest time, quantum computing's biggest hurdle was error correction since qubits were so unstable, like trying to thread a needle in the back of a bumpy car. This topological state of matter completely fixes that. We're now in a rush to make all of our sensitive digital systems quantum resistant and we're kind of running out of time. It should be possible, but if quantum computers break our most popular encryption methods before then, all of your digital data is as good as gone. Not just banking and medical systems, but smart cars, homes, security systems, your iCloud could all be controlled by anyone at any time. Even cryptocurrencies would crumble as they're built on these encryption methods to keep them anonymous and secure from hackers, which is where crypto gets its name from, encryption. So either we hurry it up and quantum proof our entire digital world, or we get forced back into the stone age of security with vaults, notebooks, and sheets of paper being the only thing keeping our private data safe.